Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to start a new series. This is going to be a project where I'm going to build a tube-driven high-voltage overdrive slash boost pedal. So if you're curious about that kind of project, please stick around. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, I wanted to use this first video to give you a little bit of context. We're going to talk about schematics. We're going to talk about layouts. We're going to talk about parts, all of kind of the pre-planning stuff that goes into a pedal build like this. And I think what's most I want you to know about this build is this is a thread I started back in January of 2018, and it is currently January of 2025. So this project has been seven years in the making. And if I started this thread, it probably means I was thinking about it even before January of 2018. But for many various reasons, I have never really gotten started. And part of it is because this project is a little bit intimidating, even for somebody that has built tube amps, just because sticking it all into a pedal, and there's a lot of questions, and that makes it kind of hard. So I'm going to link this thread in, in the description, or in as a pinned comment, so you can check it out. There's a lot of great information in this thread. A lot of the people that replied to me were really, really helpful. Uh, but the way that I'm going to take this thing, number one, I've been a little bit um, just kind of stuck because uh, my inspiration on this was the Kingsley pedals. And shout out to Simon Jarrett of Kingsley. He is a brilliant pedal maker. And this page is really kind of the primary thing that I'm being inspired by. And I found some pictures of it. I was kind of trying to get a feel for how does he do it. You can see, first of all, we got some very beautiful, but also very tight wiring. I love this kind of uh, uh, turret board here in the middle. And we've got these two tubes and they're mounted inside the chassis so it looks really clean. But then the biggest kicker about it is he's got this power supply port here at the bottom. And this part really intimidated me for a long time. You know, it looks to me like he's using some kind of solid state effect or like I think they call it maybe a Nixie type thing. You know, there's here's a fuse and there's these filtering caps or some diodes. And we got these big, I don't know what these are, transistors of some kind or JFETs or I don't know. But um, that part always kind of freaked me out. And so um, I'm going to make this thing simple. My primary goal is to make a pedal that I can use. And this is going to be kind of thinking about this as a prototype. This is not meant to be the final design. This is just one design. And I may like to iterate on it if this is something that I like. So um, a couple things is I want to make it simple. I want to make it doable. I want to make it within my realm of understanding. So to me, the biggest problem with this thing is the power supply. And so I am going to stay familiar and I'm going to build a power supply that is familiar to me as an amp builder. So it's going to look a lot something like this. Um, now, this was a hand drawn post from Tube Toaster. He built this thing and this is actually a really cool looking circuit. But I mostly want to focus on this power supply. So you've got this and 120 volts coming from the wall, 120 volts AC through an IEC power connector. That's the same kind of cable that you would use to plug into a computer. So if you're going to put this thing on your board, you're going to need to have one of those cables, which probably means you're going to need to have like a, a power strip nearby, one part of it to pedal power your board, and the second part to run the IC to power this thing, which I like because I'm familiar with it. But I think if you were going to make this thing more for mass production for guitar players, having it so that you can power it with DC is actually really nice, has some advantages, it makes it work better with pedal boards and power supplies. So you don't have to mess around with that, but I'm not going to worry about that. This has been something I've been thinking about for a long time, and, and frankly, there's there's probably enough information in this thread to have an answer on that, but again, it's been seven years. I just need to build this thing. So we're going to run 120 volts through a fuse, through a switch, into a transformer. Now, this one lists the Hammond 262E6. Now, that transformer is a little bit different than this one. This is a 261E6. The 262E6 has a high voltage of 120, whereas this one goes to 250. I think this is the one that I would prefer to use. Get these up to 250 volts, that's like full on guitar amp preamp voltage levels. So that's what I really like. You got 120 volts on the primary, then the red side gives you uh, center taps 250 volts, uh, 91 milliamps. That's going to be perfect for very, very capable of pushing a single 12A7. And then you've got a 6.3 volts at 1 amp green connection to run the heaters. So everything you need in this power supply is going to work great. Now, 
The next consideration is putting it in a box. Now this Hammond chassis, the model is 1590E. This one's kind of nice because it's 7.4 inches long, which is pretty long. It's 4.72 inches wide, which is pretty wide. But the real kicker is it's 3.7 inches tall. And the tall dimension is really necessary because if you look at this transformer, you've got the dimensions here. And so I'm probably going to look at mounting this thing on the inside of this chassis box. And so, you know, this A measurement here gives me 3.68 inches. That's pretty long. Um, you know, your B measurement here is uh, 1.8, and then your C measurement is 2.3. So there's a lot of different ways you could choose to possibly mount it. Uh, but I th I'm going to try to fit this thing inside my chassis. And so I think that this one will work given that, you know, I, I have at least one of the dimensions that can fit inside 3.07. For example, I could take the B dimension at 1.8, lay it on its side so that the, the up and down, the tallest part is this B dimension. I think that would work actually pretty well. So um, now let's take a look at the schematic that I'm working with. And again, my thought here is I want to make this thing simple. I want to make it effective. I want to make it work for me. So we're going to pick up that primary side into here. This is the secondary side. We're going to be running four uh, 1N4001 diodes as a full wave bridge rectifier. We're going to smooth it with two 22 microfarad uh, smoothing capacitors at about 350 volts. We got a, a drop you know, step down resistor, maybe 4.7K, maybe even smaller like 1K. And that's going to give us our high voltage B plus to feed the plates of these two gain stages of a 12AX7. So if we go to our input here, this is actually going to be coming from a foot switch, a, a triple pole double throw foot switch. We got a very typical input stage here. We got our, our input impedance resistor. We got a uh, grid stopping resistor 22K. On the cathode here, I've got a 1.5K bias resistor and 100K on the plate resistor. This is going to help bias this tube. Very neutral, very straightforward. Then on this cathode bypass, I'm going to think about doing a 10 microfarad versus 0.68 microfarad switch. The 10 microfarads would be more of a full range. Uh, all the frequencies are getting boosted. The 0.68 microfarads would provide a little bit of base trimming to tighten up the low end a little bit so it's a little more mid focused and this also might be like a guitar thing you know like single coils might sound really good with the 10 microfarads the full frequency but then a humbucker especially a neck pickup might really benefit from the 0.68 coming out of the plate going into 0 0.022 microfarad decoupling cap into a gain control then I got a little bit of a creative here. This is actually from Rob Robinette's website. It's called the Sizzle Control. And if you look at it, fundamentally, we've got a, two point, or a 250 picofarad. Uh, let's take a look at this. This is really a bright capacitor because it has a path if you follow up here. And then if the wiper, uh, the volume pot, or the sizzle pot is all the way up to three, to the, three, the third terminal, basically, this bright cap allows the bright high frequencies to bypass the gain control to give you brightness. And then on the flip side though, if you move the wiper down towards one, you actually bring in this circuitry, which is a 4.7 peak, uh, um, 4, 4,700 picofarads and a 75K resistor to ground. Well, that is a dulling circuit. So again, when the sizzle pot is up high, you're basically allowing for a bright cap to be inserted into the circuit. And then as you introduce resistance, you you dull or you make it harder for these high frequencies to pass. And then once you cross halfway in the pot, you actually start to bleed some of that to ground. So this is kind of your treble control or sizzle control, which is really just a creative way of taming high frequencies or boosting them as it relates to the gain control. It's a low insertion loss. It's not a big treble middle bass tone stack. I don't want that. I want this thing to be simple. So this is kind of a creative way I, that I've been thinking about doing it. Then on the second gain stage, keeping it simple, 1.5K bias resistor, 100K on the plate. Again, a very neutral way of biasing this 12AX7. We're just going to do the 10 microfarads here on the bypass cap into a 0.022 decoupling cap into a master volume control back to the foot switch for the output. So overall, it's actually a very simple and very straightforward implementation of the circuit. 
Now, with the Kingsley pedals, um, and, and I guess to contrast, this circuit here is not going to be super high gain. Only having two 12x7 gain stages means the first one is really just going to be kind of a clean boosting stage. And if you crank everything up, you could probably push this second one into some natural tube distortion. But I, my hunch is that the Kingsley pedals, through my research, is they actually introduce like a solid state boost here on the front end to push both of the gain stages into overdrive. And that might be something I'd like to experiment with in the future. But again, just for the purpose of getting this thing done, I want to build it like this. And then if I want, I could probably get a little tiny, maybe a JFET boost board and you know tweak power supply a little bit to run it down to nine volts and use that on the input. Uh, but for now, again, we need, I just want to get this thing built and we can kind of troubleshoot it or, or iterate on it in the future. Then, this is the first time I've used this DIY layout creator program, and I love this thing. It basically gives me a chance to put all of my components out on the board, and I can kind of play around with how the layout's going to be, because uh, if I do want to iterate on this, I want to have some ability to modify it. So I don't really want to make it appear point-to-point, -point, like I've done with some of my builds in the past, because then it gets like, pick, you know, it's like building a ship in a bottle, and it's really hard to get at it. So um, and I put my transformer in here in this way. I've got my power supply. I've got this, um, this turret strip here in the middle, my tube, which is going to need to be mounted. So there's a lot of things to be thinking about. But this is my current. Um, this is not finished, but just kind of my current out layout that I'm working with. So first of all, I'm going referring back to this chassis box, the 7 by 4 That's exactly the dimensions here I've got here. I've got about 4.7 and then 7 inches tall. This so is giving me my boundaries. Then my transformer, uh, I took these dimensions here, uh, the 3.6 and the 1.8, and I put that here. Here's our 1.8, here's our 3.6. And so uh, that's all going to fit really nicely. Now the transformer is going to kick out, um, well, let's, let's maybe start here at the top. Got my IEC plug here on the top, 120 volts AC coming in from the wall got a green wire here going to a uh, captive uh, ground lug just solely for the purpose of grounding this thing for safety then our white wire comes to a switch this is kind of the power on off switch and then uh, this is going to go up here into a fuse the fuse is then um, going to kick it over into the transformer the flip side the, the neutral wire of this IEC plug feeds the other side of the primary so that's how you get your 120 volts We've got an on-off switch, we've got it fused, we got it grounded, we're going to keep it safe. Then our outputs, we're going to have our filaments here, going to pins 9 and pins 4 and 5 for filament voltage. Then we've got our high voltage B+, that's going to go here to our four diodes, the four uh, 1N004 diodes for rectification, turning them into DC. Then we've got C1 and C2 and R1, which is our smoothing circuit to keep it a little bit cleaner. And then um, that kicks these red wires here, which gives us our voltage throughout the circuit. So um, now we've got our input here. The input goes into a triple pole double throw switch. On the bottom part of the switch, it bypasses through this wire and goes straight to the output jack for no effect. Then on the top, the input goes here into the circuit, runs all the way through and comes back on this lug, back to the output. Then I also have the ability to switch on an indicator light, you know, probably take just our high voltage and run it through a big resistor to get it down to 9 volts, and then that'll power this indicator, and then we've got a little bit of a uh, resistor here just to go to ground to complete the circuit so that the diode lights up. Now, our circuit here, walking through it like this, you know, we've got our input here to this, uh, this is our impedance resistor, this is our grid stopping resistor into the grid here, pin 2 of our 12x7. It gets amplified, comes out of the plate, goes through this smoothing cap, goes up to this gain control. The gain control sends it back out to the second gain stage, which gets amplified again here at pin 6 out the plate, goes through another uh, decoupling cap into this wire, which will run it into uh, our master level control. The master level then sends it down here to the switch to the output. Now at this stage, I hadn't implemented the, either the base cut which would um, you know, tinker with uh, the capacitor on the cathode, which would be, I think, this one right here. 
Um, and then also the, you know, I, didn't, I hadn't quite figured out where I'm going to put the sizzle control, but it probably would go maybe in this area. Okay, I did just spend a little bit of time working on the bass control and the sizzle. So the bass control is really simple. If we go back to our schematic here, we've got this cathode here, which is coming out of uh, pin 3. So if we go back to our layout, we've got pin 3 right here, which comes on this blue wire, goes here to this resistor. This is our bias resistor. It also sends out to this switch. Now the middle part of the switch can either send it up or down. So either which way, we've got our... 0.68 and we've got our 10 microfarad cap so we can pick between those two I think that's actually going to work pretty nicely then next we've got our sizzle control okay so right here this is our coupling cap it received the signal from the plate it was going to run through here go into the gain control but it also can now send signal to basically bridge across the gain control so here's our 250 picofarad bright cap which runs down here into the sizzle control. You can add the resistance to basically diminish the effect of the bright cap by turning up the pot, or turning down the pot, I guess. And then you'd run the output of that into the gain control. Then the flip side of it, uh, you, once you get past halfway, you actually start introducing this 4,700 picofarad cap into a 75K resistor to ground. And that will um, basically allow you to dull the circuit. So, so there, that's kind of how I implemented this. And I think this is going to work just fine. We still got some good room here. We got our pots. Um, you know, it's going to be a little bit abnormal and compared to some types of pedal builds where you've got, you know, the pots and kind of vertical, you know, the front of it's going to look a little funky, but um, in, the, in the, the input jack's going to be way at the bottom. But overall, I actually think this setup is going to work just fine. And so something I'm going to keep working on, but just want to give you a little update of how I was coming along with that. I think this is going to be really nice.